Thanks for being with us. Yeah, good to be here. Let's get right into it, because I think a lot of people want to know tonight, the episode this last week, Merle is now in Rick's group within The Walking Dead at the prison, right? Can this last? No, no, no. no. <laughs> Merle's not in Rick's group. <laughs> Merle don't belong to any group. Merle just happens to be in the same group, under the same roof, you know? So kind of a temporary situation. Yeah. Well, you know, he's not in Rick's group. <laughs> God, that's terrible. He's living within the same confines for a while. Merle's hanging out with his brother. That's, that's, that's it, that's it. He's hanging out with Daryl, right? <laughs> How is it you finally get to, to work with the actor who portrays your brother? We finally get to have a scene together. <laughs> wow! I don't know. Matt, I know. The last two yeah. How'd you like that scene, guys? Yeah. That was an awesome scene. We, we enjoyed doing it. Took, uh, yeah, we, it, was a, it was a crazy kick-ass scene. Tell me about uh, portraying Merle because He's not a guy that a lot of people may be drawn to initially, but you you played a lot of bad guys in your time, and you don't approach it as he's a, as if he's a bad guy, right? How do you approach this character? I I, I am very careful. <laughs> he's a dangerous guy. You know, you don't want to turn it around on you with his right hand facing towards you. You know. <laughs> That's right. And, and speaking of that, what? Can you tell us, what, what is that on your hand? Is there a real blade there? What's the little Merle? Blade? That's little Merle. Little Merle's on my hand. <laughs> you know, you, you know what? But, you know, I go back to your previous question. I won't keep it. I won't be long, but, you know, it, Merle's very, very uh, kind of, uh, I mean, it's a tough role to, to get into, you know? And, uh, and, and uh, you know, I have fun doing it. So I, I enjoy the kind of guys that are, Living on the edge, so that's that's kind of my style. I like that. You played a few, a couple. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the first season, you put in that situation where you gotta do or die, take the hand off to survive, and then we really don't see you again at all. Not not much of you until this season. How what, did they tell one? Yeah, that season one uh, was only six episodes. Anyway. True, true. So. Uh, after, after Merle uh, cuts his hand off and leaves the rooftop, you don't get a lot of visual Merle, but you know there's a lot of stuff. I, I, I noticed that there was a lot of things about Merle that's being mentioned, and, you know, like uh, Merle's bike and Merle's stash and, and, and all this kind of stuff. So it, 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 that, in that way, the writers kept uh, um, you know, Merle's presence still in the mix. It was very smart and very cool of them to be doing that, you know. Was there any concern on your part that you may or may not be coming back, or did you always feel like, I'm, I'm coming back? Uh, no, I, I really didn't know if I was coming back or not until, the, uh, uh, until I come back in the second season, uh, after, after me and, uh, me and uh, Norman have our scene right in the, in the, um, when he falls down from the yeah, hallucinating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I kind of... Once they once they did that, I, I sort of felt, yeah, yeah. I think this this character is definitely going to come back sometime. Had as an actor, had the dynamic changed at all within within what they were doing when you came back versus when you when you were with them a couple of years earlier? Well, what do you mean dynamics? What do you mean the dynamics of the actors of the group? You were you were with them. You're gone for a season. You come back. Anything I, different? No, I, I don't really care. <laughs> I was never with him anyway. What's without giving anything away? What can we look forward to the next several couple? I'm of not years? telling you. <laughs> we we'll pull something out here. I know we know there's a confrontation. Let me see how good you are. Come on, try to get we know out. there's a confrontation with the governor coming up, right? We know that's happening. How do you know? I read the book. How do you know that? I don't care about it. Of course, I know. How do you know that? 
Well, we know it because it's in the, the book. It, it is in the book. The good book. The good book. <laughs> it's a very good book. It's a very good book. book. Um, it's in the book, it's and also confrontation. We know it because it's in the good book. <laughs> and we know that if there is a confrontation, it's going to be Merle's going to kick his ass. Merle's going to do something. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's what it is. It coming now to Merle versus the governor. It, why would I say that? <laughs> AMC. They'd have your head. Are my friends. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are, there, well, look, look, there are always confrontations and conflicts going on in this project. And uh, Merle, uh, of course, being in the middle of some of these things uh, is kind of, you know, what Merle is all about. I mean, even when I was not there, all the things that went wrong with Rick's group was sort of blamed on Merle. It's, it's true. true. It's true. It's true. Dude, right. I, 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 like, I shot the kid, right? You know, I was shooting for the deer, and the bullet went through the deer and shot the kid. It's, it's all, everybody thought it was Merle. Everybody thought Merle, Merle, in the first season, everybody thought Merle led the zombies up to the encampment for the first That's right. Uh, right. Attack, you know, as revenge. So. Of course, this year, Merle has attempted to kill a couple of the folks in no, Rick's No, no, no. no. Merle has not attempted to kill anyone. If Merle attempts to kill, Merle kills. <laughs> Merle has attempted to gain information from a few people through Merle's way. <laughs> well, and one of his, one of the, my favorite ways Merle does the Merle this. Way, yes. The Merle way is actually just releasing a zombie in the room, right? Yeah, well, you just, know what? I, uh, yeah, yeah, I thought that was quite fair, actually. It was fair. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I had, well, on the rooftop, I had my hand handcuffed. You know, it's true. So, it's, true. You know, it's like one of those, you know, you, here's a little payback. We know what that is. Um, talk to me about, you know, working with zombies here. Yeah. When, is there a favorite zombie kill you had so far? You know, I like the one, uh, I, I, I do like the one where the zombie's coming up behind me, and I just go like that. He goes up to his skull and falls, and, and, uh, and Michonne, and, and uh, the poor little <laughs> weakened, sickly, blonde girl. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that little sugar tits. <laughs> you notice, they did not warn me at all. If they were true friends, if they were true friends of Merle, they would have warned, right. they would have warned Merle, right. but they didn't. And I think Merle took note. <laughs> Payback at some point. Well, you know, you never know. How does Merle feel about his brother at this point? <clears throat> well, what do you, you know, I mean, the poor guy's been brainwashed. That's it. Yeah. Does he look at that that he's way? Living, he's, on, he's living with the city folk now, you know. <laughs> he's lost all sense of of, of the countryness, you know. He can't even run a trout line anymore properly. <laughs> but it probably is better to be with a group if you want to survive. You believe that? <laughs> I don't believe that. Of course, we haven't seen a lot of people survive in this show. This is one of those shows where people... This, this group also would slow you down. This is true. I mean, you got a little infant, you got, you know, you got, you know, just people who, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> this is an unusual show in that main characters die throughout the season. They're killed. Is they deserve it. <laughs> on the set, is it on the to eat too? <laughs> They'll have to eat a lot. Um, is it, how is this treated on the set? Is this an unusual situation? What? what do when you you're saying bye bye to, to an actor who's been, you've been working with for a while and, and who's an integral part of the show? I don't care. <laughs> So 
are you enjoying this interview? I don't know, I don't care. It doesn't bother me. Are you getting the answers you want? I want to know if Merle is going to survive the season. And those are the kind of answers I Why would you want to know that? Why in the hell would you want to know that? Tell me honestly, why would you want to know that? Inquiring minds. <laughs> um, we're going to open it up in a few minutes to you guys out here. And don't bother asking them what's going to happen, because you know the answer already. Um, let's talk. Don't want to know. <laughs> it's the governor. It's you and the governor. And that's going to be a great episode. The governor already has. Issues. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't need to mess with Merle anymore. Merle Shush! <laughs> Merle! I can't even see all out there. <laughs> it's tough. Um, Michael, you've been in so many great movies over the years. Thank you. I want to go through kind of a little list here and maybe Ball you just... Mall Rounds. That's, that's a classic. Of, uh, uh, words or feelings about, about some of these projects. Go, Let's do start it. off with ball rats. Let's go ball rats. Ball rats. Stink palm. Next. <laughs> Tombstone. Horses. Sore ass. Next. <laughs> do you like westerns? Do you like westerns? I do like westerns. I do ride. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I don't. I don't. I, I ride well, so I didn't have a sore ass, but some people did. I'm sure. <laughs> Cliffhanger. Yeah. yeah. You know that one? Yeah. Italian food. Cappuccino. Do a cappuccino. I, I read that that you got Italian it. women. Beautiful. <laughs> Romance. Seven no, months, right, in Italy. No, it's beautiful. Uh, no, Rome is uh, such a beautiful city. Absolutely gorgeous city. And I read that you got in the best shape of your life when you that one. When? Cliffhanger. No, no. I'm in the best shape of my life right now. I'm now. The walking dead. Yeah. <laughs> you know, kicking zombies' asses are a lot harder than climbing rock face. <laughs> How about uh, Days of Thunder? Yeah. Right on, Roddy Burns, baby. Yeah. He's the man. Yeah, there's thunders. Very cool, very cool. Here's what I think a lot of people would remember. Henry, portrait of a serial killer. Yeah, yeah I killed my mama. I killed my mama. Yeah. Poor Henry. Poor Henry. Oh. You know, women really liked Henry. They did. It was really odd. Yeah, very was... strange. Because Henry killed women, see? It was really bizarre for me to meet people. And women would come up to me and go, Oh, poor Henry. And I'm going, What? What are you talking about, poor Henry? Oh my God. He would murder you. Woman, he would, he would just, oh, never mind. I can't, I can't even say it. Oh, it's terrible. But you still hear people to this day have a big reaction to that movie. Well, it's, it's a cool little movie. It was uh, independently done. We shot it in my old neighborhood, you know. Chicago. Yeah, and, and we brought our own lunches. It was, I mean, we did the whole entire movie for about $120,000. So uh, it was very cheaply done. We had no permits whatsoever. The cops would turn the corner. We'd cut, run into the gangway and wait. They'd drive by. We'd look again and go back out and finish the scene. <laughs> so, it, was, it was really a cool underground you know, jungle warfare movie making. It was, it was awesome. And you, uh, I heard you stayed in character the whole shoot because this was really the first movie you worked on, right? Mm, yeah, I did. I, you know what? I found it very difficult to go in and out of uh, character. I, it, just, it was just hard, you know? So I found it much easier to, when they cut, I would go into my room, close the door, and wait until they did all the lighting and all the tweaking, and then they'd knock on the door. <laughs> and then I'd come out and do the scene, and then I'd go back in my room and wait. And then, you know, that's how I did the entire uh, shooting of Henry. 
You were so convincing in that role. Very, they were very afraid of me. <laughs> I bet. I bet. He's in his room. <laughs> we don't know what he does in there, but he's in his room. Don't bother him. Were you worried at all you might be typecast because of that role? You were so convincing at the time. You know what? Um, yeah, typecasting question comes up a lot. Uh, young actors are out there right now. I mean, you can only hope for to be typecast. Uh, that means you're going to work again, usually. <laughs> it means you did something yeah, really I mean, well, right? You did something very well in the, in the you know, in, the, in this life. Yeah, well, I, I, although I did, you know, I, you can still be picky and selective. Don't get me wrong. But, um, you know, having some something about you that people see in you, like, you know, whether or not, you know, they, they're, they're happier in the room or they're kind of like, Taken back that you're in the room. You're, you're at least at least you're giving them something. You're giving, getting something from you. And so for me, uh, Henry was the first real film that I'd ever done. You know, so I, I was I was uh, a kind of not sure if I was going to be very good at this filmmaking because things are shot in and out of sequence. And you know, uh, but I found that I was actually quite good at that kind of thing. You know, picking up. Uh, uh, you know, doing the end of the movie and then going back to the, to the beginning. I mean, we're just flipping around all the time. So yeah, I, I, I dug it. I ended up being pretty good at it. I'd say so. Um, here's one I think a lot of people here are fans of. Slither. Yeah. <laughs> Slither, uh, one of the hardest movies I ever did. The makeup took seven hours to get on. It was quite uh, painful. Um, and um, when they actually gave me a day off from the makeup, the guy that came in to do the makeup, get in the in the in the grand grand monster outfit, could only be in it for 20 minutes, and he gave up and left. That was it. That was it. And, and I usually, once I get in, you know, I'm, I'm in there all day. So it was it was quite crazy. Yeah. Wow. One of the things about that is uh, is the man you made that with. He's got a new movie coming out pretty soon. <coughs> And, and, yep, and uh, it's a new uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy. And everybody wants to know, is Michael Rooker going to be in Guardians of the Galaxy? You know, just because you're friends with James Scott doesn't mean you're going to be in his movie. <laughs> but it's worked out for you. Are you kidding me? I'd love to be in his movie. I'm not saying no, I don't want to be in his movie because I'm his friend. You know, I want to be in his movie because I'm his friend. I don't want to be in the movie. Of course, but you know what? I mean, that's all, you know, that's... That's out of my hands. I, I don't have anything to say any, anything to say about it. So no breaking news here. Nothing we can we can announce. <laughs> this is the look. This is the rural look I'm in right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. He's all the way in London. I, you know. So. Um, the other thing that you you've done a lot of in the last few years is uh, voices for. For some really popular video games. That's right. Yeah. Any pot, any favorites out there? Call of Duty. Call of Duty. Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah. Lollipop Chainsaw. Call of Duty. Black Ops One. Black Ops Two. Uh, the new one with me and Norman. Uh, the, the, the new one is also by Activision. Uh, what's it? What's it called? Well, I know it's Walking Dead. Survival, Survival Instinct. Survival Instinct. Do your homework. <laughs> What's that? Oh, Getting hot. hot. The coat's coming. <laughs> you are in good shape. <laughs> For a man of my age. I knew what you were thinking. <laughs> How do you like this? The, the video games, the voices. Is it? Uh, is it? Dude, just, I love it. I love. I love working in the gaming industry. It's awesome. Uh, I, I love doing the motion capture. It brings me back to acting 101 because you know this this block of wood could represent a tank or an F-16, and so you're you're there and you you got all these little weird old dots and sensors all over your body, and your gun could be a water bottle for God's sake. Okay, just like when you're like an eight-year-old. <laughs> you know? 
they frown on you going <laughs> but they, they like you they pretend like you're really shooting at them. And so I love it. I love it. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, and it's just like you say, it's not just your voice. They're you're acting it out. So no, you're, yeah, you're doing oh, yeah. when you do motion capture, you do uh, they're they're there to capture every nuance of your of your body your body language. So yeah, you have to you gotta play it out. Yeah. Let's uh, let's open. Anybody have any questions for Michael? Oh, we got some questions. Come on up. Questions? Oh, okay, we got mics cool. on this side and microphone on this side. Oh, great. Come on. Let's start with you right here. Make them good, damn it. <laughs> Ask him what's going to happen the rest of the season. Ah, uh, so I'm a huge fan of The Walking Dead and really excited that Merle's back this season, not as just a hallucination. Um, Me too. And, <laughs> I was wondering, I have two questions. What is your favorite? Only one question. One question. I'm breaking the rules. No, um, one question. Pick a good one, one question. Okay, what is your favorite part and most challenging part about playing a character like Mom? Uh, that's, that's two or three questions built into one. <laughs> I'm just trying the to favorite, The favorite part uh, 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 for me Playing Merle is I I almost almost get to do and say anything I want <laughs> <laughs> or any anything that the, I can elaborate on on uh, the script. The script says it one way. I I sort of change it into a more a southern vernacular and, and I and I say it in my um, my Alabama kind of accent way. Yeah. Cool. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Do I have it here? Okay. How do you think Merle would handle would have handled Shane? Would he have killed him, or would he have taken his side? You know what? I think Merle and, and Shane have a lot in common, but he is a cop. <laughs> Please. We can guess Merle was a big Merle, fan. Merle and, and, and law enforcement really don't don't get along too well. Next. <laughs> How about over here? Hello, I like your shoes. Um, I'm going you. to you know, be in Atlanta in a few months, and I was wondering what... So what? I want to know what's fun to do there. <laughs> Stay out in the heat. <laughs> Find a nice pool, have a Long Island iced tea, and chill out. Does the cast ever hang out at cool places? <laughs> no, I'm not looking for a you have an address to You want to know where we hang, don't you? <laughs> yeah, we, we hang out every now and then. <laughs> Next. <laughs> like, well, how brutal is it? You want to know where we hang out, too? <laughs> And I, and I want to know the days you're going to be there. How brutal is what? How brutal is the heat in working down there in Atlanta? It's, it's absolutely brutal. I mean, the, on season one on the rooftop, it was about 115 degrees. You know, when I was sitting there, my ash was melting into the tar <laughs> of the rooftop. It was brutal, dude. It was ugly and, and hard. You know, poor, poor uh, irony. The heat, the second day after the fight scene we did, we did this big fight scene, right? Yeah. And man, that, I gotta tell you, that, that shit takes it out of you. Especially when it's 115 degrees on the rooftop. And, uh, and you have no relief because the heat's coming down at you and the heat's coming, being bounced back up on you. In his own, kind of a different way. And Thank you, I taught him everything he knows. <laughs> I don't think he's had any romance on the show, man. Right? <laughs> Something like Carol, maybe. The show. The show, yeah. That, that could be interesting. Yeah. Two bladed humans. <laughs> going at it. Oh, her, her, her plate is longer than mine. <laughs> Next, come on, over here. I love you in Slither and I wanted to know what it's like working with Nathan. He's so boring, I cannot believe he's so, he's so nice. He's such a nice Canadian. I love him. I love him. He's so nice. 
He's a very, a very uh, professional individual. He's uh, uh, an extremely handsome man. If I were a lady like you, I would be hot for that guy, for sure. <laughs> you like his new show? I love it. Don't you? Uh, yes, it's the best. Uh, all, everybody loves it. Everybody loves it. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> How about over here? Go ahead. First, just because I know a lot of people are thinking this, where's Carl? <laughs> He's in the house somewhere. Uh, He's uh, in the bathroom with one of those magazines or something. I don't know. Now, of course, I was just wondering, so, of course, we have your, your hand replacement pool things. We know we don't like the word. Starts with S, ends in um. Um, do you clean scenes, like to kind of just go around where it is? That sounds it? sexual to me. <laughs> S and um, what's your sign? <laughs> I'm sorry, what's your question? <laughs> do you like to wear the, uh, the hand replacement uh, attachment things around the set just for giggles? Like when you're not when? in the scene? Oh, when, when I, can I, do I, like, take it home with me or something? Or is it around the semester? It depends on who's visiting. <laughs> Some world does get something. Uh, I, I, uh, you know what, uh, um, I gotta tell you, you get used to wearing it, but I take it off as soon as possible. Yeah, awesome. It, it, it gets a little hot. Next. Hi, so I was wondering, maybe since you're one of the really good bad guys on the show, that maybe you and Andrea would hook up further along, because she definitely likes the She guys. likes the bad guys. She likes the bad boys. So maybe oh. you should set your sights on Andrea. I'm a little too bad for her. <laughs> you're one step beyond that. I'm, I'm, way, I, yeah, I'm, 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 yeah, yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> How about over here? What? I was wondering. In Call of Duty Black Ops 2, when you found out Harper could die, depending on your fans, how did you react? Pissed me off. <laughs> on a whim, you could just shoot me? I, I thought it was a great, you know, that's the first time they've ever done that. Um, had a, a lead character be able to, based on, based on this, or what you want to do in the story, to be killed off. And, and it was very cool. I, I, did, did you like being able to do that? Yes, but I see you. Sick. Sick. You <laughs> <laughs> killer. <laughs> hey, Michael, how about um, you're able to, in this Call of Duty, also kill zombies? What? The new, the new, the new video game. You, you can kill zombies, right? Yeah, they have a zombie pack, yeah. And you're in it. Am I in it? You're in it. I didn't know I was in it. They, they owe me money. <laughs> that's, what you, that's what you get for, for getting scanned. You're scanned the rest of your career in life beyond after you're dead. They can still use you. I didn't even know I was in it, so hey, I'm going to call them up tomorrow. <laughs> How about over here? Yeah, bro, go ahead. Um, we've seen in the last in a couple of recent episodes that uh, Merle and Daryl have a little bit of feedback from their past. Do we get to look more into how life was with them before the apocalypse? In the game, yeah, that's what it's all about. The game is the game is about Merle and Daryl prior to Atlanta. So you get a, you get a look, a kind of a a gaming version look of what these characters were like. So, uh, whether or not they're going to, uh, you know, do some, some, I don't think they're going to do flashbacks or anything like that, so. Hey, if you know better than me, I, 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 I have no idea, really, so. And if he knew, he wouldn't tell you. <laughs> if I knew, I wouldn't tell you, that's for sure. Hi, um, what's I the... remember you. <laughs> yeah, what's the funniest thing that happened to you on set? The funniest thing? that they are actually going to bring me back. <laughs> Hi, honey. Hi. Hi, go ahead. Speak loud. Um, if you had to choose two people, who would the two people be for a real zombie apocalypse? Two people? 
Merlin girl. <laughs> We're the only two that know how to hunt, fish, trap, run a trout line. I mean, I mean, everybody else is everybody else is from the city, city slip. They 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 don't know how to survive in the wilderness. They can't eat. They can't hunt. They can't do any of that. Yeah. So it did be yeah definitely Merlin girl are the best suited to uh, survive in a zombie apocalypse. Right here. I, I just wanted to know, uh, other than the Italian girls, what was the best part of uh, Cliffhanger? Dude. <laughs> I, well, I was in really good shape, I have to say. Um, um, climbing and being on the being at 11,000 feet up. Because uh, I've, I've always liked, I, I like being fit. And, and so I do Kokushin Karate and I did Aikido and all this stuff. And I like to stay in shape. And um, getting up there and doing all that work on the mountaintop, you're 11,000 feet up sometimes. And so you're working, the, the, the air is quite thin. And after being up there seven, six, seven months, you come back, I went back to Chicago, and the best part of doing Cliffhanger was after the show, after the film was over, I couldn't get tired. <laughs> I could double skip just until I got, it was boring. I was like, oh my God, I can't get tired. I really couldn't get tired. It was That's amazing. Good. Anything uh, dealing with Stallone, working with Stallone? Any memories? <laughs> <laughs> he was in pretty good shape back then. He was my hero. He saved me. I love the right. guy. Yeah, no, it was awesome. It was awesome. All right. Right. Uh, big, yeah. big fan. Um, of all the names that come up with over the last few decades, what is your personal favorite uh, word for zombies? My personal favorite for what? Your personal favorite word for zombies. Uh, the undead, stenches, walkers, twitchers. Stinkers. Twitchers. Stinkers. Stinkers, they stink. <laughs> biters? <laughs> They're biters too, right? I call them stinkers. Yeah, like, okay, go ahead. Hey, how's it going? It's Pat and Darryl again. I'm just wondering if it came down to it. We're You're almost, almost as dirty as Norman Reedus. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're just dirty. That's weird. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Ask your question. So if it came down to it, Merle versus Daryl, how would Daryl win and why? Whoa. Merle versus Daryl. There would be that. There's never a Merle versus Daryl. Merle and Merle and Daryl are always together. Hold on. Who can bench press more? Uh, 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 no. You know, Merle versus Daryl, there's no, there's no real, it's a silly question. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Please. So you're saying that'll never happen? It'll never happen. Allegedly. I'm not saying it, it'll never happen, because I don't want to say yes or no or anything like in between. But I'm just saying that, you know, I wouldn't want to tangle with that Norman Reedus. He's a big guy. <laughs> Next, go ahead. Go over here. All right. Um, I would like to ask, Michonne and Merle obviously have had conflict, but when you approached her and you asked her if things were cool, did you do that because you felt like she's a possible competitor for strength? Or did you ask her that because you wanted to patch things up with Daryl and you thought by patching things up with the rest of the group that you could do that? Oh, you want to know? Well, that scene's already been done, so I can sort of tell you what was about. Right? That's why I asked. Yeah. Well, I, I, I kind of thought she was a little bit hot, man. <laughs> I was trying to like make everything make everything look cool, you know. You gotta go for the bigger story. Yeah. Right? Well, you know, she was. Didn't you see that look when she turned and walked away? Did they? I didn't see the cut. But did they have the look of my face when I was watching her walk away? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Did she? <laughs> they had hers. Yeah, they had hers, and she was not They cut mine out, they cut mine out because they didn't want anyone to see it. <laughs> Thank you. I was like, ooh, mama. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. If the zombie apocalypse actually happens, what would be your weapon of choice? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> Me. <laughs> My little brother, Norman Reedus, he would be good to have. He's an ass-kicking zombie-killing mofo. 
Go ahead. Hello, sweetheart. How are you? Hello, darling. <laughs> if Marla was in charge of the group, what would you do differently? Would you go to the prison? <laughs> you, know, Mer you know, Merle has changed since season one. Season one, Merle did want to be in charge, right? Remember that? <laughs> Democracy time, y'all. We're at your hands. Of course, I had a 45 in my other hand. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but uh, I think Merle has changed um, since the last, since the season one. Uh, I, I, I have, I, I don't think Merle wants to be in charge at all. But Merle does see the discrepancies in, in how he would, I think, how he would uh, choose to uh, proceed, you know? Yeah, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I won't tell you too much about that kind of stuff. Thank you. Sneaky. <laughs> Good try. How about over here? Personally, I think Merle was uh, the biggest anticipation for season three, so Merle makes season three to me. And, but obviously, at some point, you know, somebody's going to go down. So, if you had to die, what would be your choice for death? My choice for death? As Merle? As Mer yeah, as Merle. Would you rather go, like, being shot like in the video game, or <laughs> getting taken down by zombies? Or, say, a samurai sword to the head? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. I think I'd like to be poolside with a couple of Long Island iced teas and just chilling out. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> Die with zombies coming from behind. It's an easy, you know, feed up. <laughs> How about a Merle zombie? How cool would that be? I mean, you'd have to die, but a zombie Merle. A zombie Merle? I don't know. I, I don't know. Would I, would I have to give away my good looks? <laughs> Next question. Thank you. Go ahead. I'm just really excited to say that I finally met both of the Dixon brothers, so... When did you meet uh, Norman? Um, it was, I think, two years now at ZombieCon. Oh, right on. Yeah. Right on. Um, and I just wanted to say, a little while ago, I put Tombstone in and started watching, and I was like, oh my god, he's in there! And I was just wondering, what was it like working on that set? Oh, it's one of my favorite was awesome. movies. Tombstone so. was awesome. Yeah, do you, know, do you know people on Tombstone? Ah, oh, sadly, no. Oh, okay. No, it was, it was great. It was great. I, I've, been, uh, I've been writing and shooting ever since. It was an awesome, awesome film. Sometimes, whenever you do films, the actors get involved in these films. You, you learn, and you, uh, you're, you're getting all these new things you learn how to do. And in Tombstone, I learned how to shoot, you know, from the hip, you know, uh, single action pistols. And uh, I've got, I've been shooting single action pistols ever since. I'm really a big, a big fan of shooting all the shooting sports. I, I bought into a shooting range. I'm co-owner of a shooting range, and I just get to shoot. Yeah, oh hell yeah, yeah. I go and I shoot rifle and pistol, shotgun, and it's just a, a joy. I, it's just very relaxing, and well fun. She makes a good point, though. It does seem if you go to the video store and just close your eyes and grab a DVD, yeah. there's a good chance Michael Rooker's going to be in there. <laughs> I mean, and there's a good chance I'm going to have a gun in my hand, right? You could have a gun in your hand. Oh, yeah, God, that's, I mean, it, it's so good to know that as an actor, you got to learn how to do these things, because right. you can't always trust the, the expert on the set. In, in, in the early days of filming, you know, when I was back in Chicago, they'd come up to you and go, hey, here's your gun, here's your gun, here's your gun, here's your gun. Okay, don't shoot anybody. <laughs> well, they just walk away. And you're standing there going like, this is a real gun. What do I do with this? <laughs> yeah. And, and, I mean, they're a, a, a way more, way more diligent and, and careful about that nowadays. You know, hence we've had several hor horrific accidents. Right. But, um, but, you know, as an actor, I have, I learn and I, I, I want to know about this stuff before I, before I go out and do it. So I have to do my own research on my own. Um, I, I know. But one of the first things I always ask is, okay, what am I shooting? Um, do, you, do you know what we're going to be using and stuff like that so that I can go out and, um, and train? Thank you. Thank you. I, I'm hoping you didn't do too much research for Henry Portrait of a Serial. There was none required. <laughs>
first thing, I have a friend in Virginia named Allison, and she wanted me to tell you that she loves you. Aww. She's cute, but she's married. Sorry. Yeah, but she loves me. <laughs> but she loves you. She does. She absolutely loves you. If you ever were in the D.C. area, you got a place to stay. There you go. <laughs> um, but she's married. But, but the, she, he travels a lot. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Dead script, what drew you to it? What really made you go, I have to do this part? Well, I, you know what? I, I found out about the role prior to reading the script. Um, it was pitched to me by a couple of friends of mine who was uh, the, uh, the Finn Cannons. Lisa May and Craig Finn Cannon, they, they are casting people down in uh, Wilmington, North Carolina. And they, they called me in the middle of the night and said, Rooker, 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 Rooker. Oh my God, oh my God, we're, we're casting this, there's this role in here, it's just right, here. oh dude, it's written for you, you've got to do this role. And they told me about the role, and they told me, you know, it's this ass, you know, this shit kicking kind of southern guy. There's zombie kill. Redneck, redneck guy, and, and you know, and I'm like, yeah, 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 okay, it's been done before. And she's, and then they're like, yeah, but he, he, he's handcuffed. To the rooftop, and he cuts his hand off. And I swear, as soon as they said he cuts his hand off to get away from the zombies, I'm like, I'll do it. <laughs> I, I like that. I like that he can do that. And I, and I, that was one of the things in the beginning that really, like, caught my attention. You know, and um, he, you know, it meant he was a, he's a fighter. He doesn't give up, even even when when things are at its you know, bleakest, you know, you're, you're a moment before you meet your maker, he's still fighting. Yeah, and that's who Durrell and that's who Durrell and, and Merle are, you know, because we're brothers and that's we're survivors. Ultimate we survivors. Will be. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Did it did it help that he, th these two characters are not in the books, not in the comic books? It, for me it helped. It did it did not bother me whatsoever. I was I was happy about it because it was starting uh, with a clean slate. Which is always cool. Absolutely. Go ahead. Hi. Uh, now that Merle's out of the prison, um, if T Dog was survived, how would that interact with Now that Merle? Merle is back in prison, you mean, <laughs> don't you? Back with the group. <laughs> yeah, we never got to have that Merle T Dog confrontation. Yeah, I know, wasn't that sad? That's sad. That was a sad thing. I'm sorry, I, I, what was your question again? How, how would uh, Merle and T Dog interact when Merle came to prison? But Tito, if, he, if, Tito Tito was dead, survive. if he had survived, yeah, if he was still around, oh, dude, I, I you know, uh, well, I don't know, you know. Mm -hmm. Would would T Doc invent, uh, eventually die? You know, I, I think I think it was it was uh, it was a situation that, as an actor, I'm looking at all these characters dying. And I'm thinking, well, shit. All the guys that I hate are dying. <laughs> you know, and, and, and first off, I had a big question about why am I kicking the shit out of this little Asian kid? He wasn't the one that handcuffed me, first off. He wasn't That's the right. one up on the rooftop. I don't even, you know, but he, I, I found out that I went back and I saw that he was there. He was there. Yeah, yeah. he just, he wasn't the most aggressive. He just didn't say anything, right? That's so right. I, I, you know, but anyway. But Rick Rick is still around, and <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the right. ultimate crunch for Merle. Yes, that's right. right. He is, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. How about over here? Uh, hi. Um, I've been trying to think of a question that wasn't Walking Dead related. Um, has there ever been a role that you like really tried to get and uh, or auditioned for and didn't get that you wish yes. you had? All right. Thank you. <laughs> uh, can it, you elaborate? It, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> you always want to get all the ones that you go for, but you don't. It doesn't happen. You know? Is there one, like any specific ones that you remember? Yeah, uh, yes, but I'm not gonna tell you. <laughs> <laughs> do you? But when that happens, do you go and watch that movie and say, "Thanks on a plane"? <laughs> no, I, 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 there's, been, there's been a few. There's been a few. Do you then watch the movie and say, "Ah, I could have done that so much better"? I've turned down roles. When I've read the script, I, things turn me off or turn me on. I turn down, I've turned down roles, 
and, I, and after I see the film later on, I go, well, shit. <laughs> I would have done the role if I had known they were going to rewrite it. <laughs> God. You know, it happens all the time. So when I, for actors out there, do not decide whether or not you're going to do the script or the film or the, the play or any of this kind of stuff just based on the script. Because scripts basically are meant to change. I mean, this is the jumping off point when you get the script. Unless you're doing a James Gunn project. <laughs> and it stays exactly the same. It's almost exactly the same as when you first read it. It's at the, it that's only because he writes it so well. Great, yeah. He's a great writer. And, and um, so, like with Slither, I, there was not even a single word that was changed. I mean, intentionally. <laughs> is there a genre that you like better one better than the other? Like you said, you like doing a western, horror, action. You, you know, I, I've, done, I've done everything, and, and it doesn't matter to me as long as I get paid. <laughs> Next, how about you? Over here. Yeah. I, I love you on the show. Thank and you. I wanted to know if I can give you a hug. You want to give me a hug, like right now? Yeah. Uh. Hmm, shit, okay. Um, oh my god! Uh, okay, we got five more minutes. So five more minutes, come on. Let's get some more questions. No, you don't get a hug. <laughs> no more hugs, no more hugs. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hi, Michael. I noticed uh, between this and in your appearance last weekend in Portland, yeah, that there seems to be. A, well, I'm surprised by the number of kids that, right. that are that are here. Just, I can't see. I don't care. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Don't tell me there are kids out there. Oh, no, no, no kids. No. Well, no. I just noticed them, uh, and I was wondering, um, what do you th any thoughts on having such young fans of uh, such a violent and gruesome show? Uh, I think they. You know what? They gotta learn sooner or later, buddy. <laughs> Might as well start them young enough that they, you know, that they don't really understand what violence really means. We'll eventually encounter zombies sooner or later. We yeah, gotta right. yeah, well, get ready. ready. Are you at all surprised at how gruesome this show is? I mean, we, we've all seen the worst of the worst zombie movies, and this is every bit as gruesome. Yes, as it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But you know what? You, they treat. They treat the, um, the, the colorization of the, of the, of the, of the uh, action sequences when they're killing the zombies. And that's, that's kind of uh, interesting because the color affects people, I think, more so than sort of black and white or, or it's sort of washed out. And, 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 it, and you, can, you, can, you can accept it more. It, it's interesting how that works. It's pretty cool. It's very cool, but I, I know, I, it's, it's, but, but it does, it does. How about a real one? Yeah, go ahead. What is, the, what is your favorite role that you've ever done in all years of acting? Wow, I, I don't really, you know, I, I've, asked, I've been asked this question before, and I don't really have a favorite role, but I, there are a few that are my favorite roles. Um, Hush up back there, you ugly, good for nothing, scum sucking pigs! <laughs> Such as what role? Um, <laughs> Days of Thunder is an awesome role. Um, uh, uh, Henry, of course, my first the film, it. it was an awesome role. Uh, Cliffhanger was a cool guy, it was an awesome role. Um, of course, what I'm doing right now, Merle Dixon is an ass-kicking role. Dude, any, any actor in their right, I mean, my God, it's an awesome, awesome role. And, it, and because it is TV, I, you know, you can develop and it goes along and you stretch it and it's really cool to... Most of my roles are from film, so I get the beginning, middle, and end, the through line. I get one whack at it, that's it. If I screw up on the TV show, I get to, I get to fix it maybe the next episode, you know. But yeah, yeah, there's, there's, you know, there's a couple that I really like, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Any that you really hate? <laughs> Any that you hate? Any what? Any roles that you didn't like? Um, you care? Uh, well, there have been films that I didn't like. 
there have been a couple that I was like, my God, I hope this thing never comes out. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I call them my, my roof repair film. Pay <laughs> for the roof? Yes. <laughs> or my new car film. <laughs> <laughs> My mortgage payment. Though. That's right, baby. You go. You know. We all do it. So go ahead. First, thank you for being part of the awkward experience that was taking my parents to their first indie film to see a new portrait of a serial killer. Right on, brother. Thank you. So, uh, as, and how old were you when you saw that? Um, eighteen. Oh, eighteen. Okay, so not too old. Right on. So, as an actor, it can be fun to portray extremes. Do you ever have any personal difficulty with the extremes of morals, racism, and portraying that? No, I, I haven't. Um, <laughs> because that's moral. That's who he is. That's who he is. That's how he was. Uh, that's how he's brought up. Um, yeah, you know what? I mean, that's just who he is. And he. And he. I, and as a matter of fact. I don't think Merle is as big a bigot and racist that he's portrayed to the other people. Especially in the season one, he's like the biggest, baddest, ugliest, racist, good for nothing, scum sucking pig in the world. He beating up that poor black man on the rooftop. Oh, come on, please. You didn't have to be a racist to do that. You know? Anybody who came up to that rooftop and told Merle to stop was about to get their ass kicked. Plain and simple. You could have been green, yellow, black, blue. It didn't matter what color the guy was or who they were. Merle Dixon was high as a kite. He had one thing on his mind to just shoot the heads off zombies. And anybody telling him what to do at that point was about to get an ass kicked. So it just so happens that it was T-Dog. Well, well, and plus, when you see the scene again, who punched first? <laughs> Shit happens. <laughs> Let's get one more question here. Go ahead. Hi, I, was, I couldn't see you last weekend, but I was there. I got to meet You were there in spirit? Yeah, I, well, I was there at the convention. You were there physically? I was actually there. Um, but when I got home that night, I actually caught Days of Thunder on TV. Oh, wow. What was it like doing the wheelchair scene? Doing the wheelchair race was my favorite scene in the movie. That was so much fun. I'll tell you a really fast story about the wheelchair race. The wheelchair race, you know, Tom Cruise had done that, that movie where he played the, um, the Vietnam War. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, from the wheelchair, right? So this cat, could, he could pop his wheelchair up in a wheelie, spin circles, and come right back down on a dime. He was really good, and he did that while I was there, trying to learn how to do this. And I look like an idiot. I look like, I'm like getting my fingers caught in the spokes, and I'm like trying to do it. And so he comes up, and he spins his wheel, and he did, and then he, and then, you know, he's like showing off, right? Dude, I tell you what. There ain't nothing that gets me. I went away. I took my wheelchair and I went down the hallway and I went into this room and I locked the door. And I figured out why I was so afraid of these wheelchairs. I was afraid of hitting my head. If I go back like this, I was afraid it's going to go back and I'm going to hit my head, right? I, my head had already been hit. You know, a few times, so I didn't want any more of this on my head. So I, I, I tucked my chin in and I whipped that wheelchair back so hard at least a half a dozen times until I would just go like this. And I'd smack it down, and I, once I realized I wasn't going to hit the back of my head, I was cool. Then I started practicing getting up on the wheelchair, right? And, and doing the wheelies and stuff like that. And then they, and about 40 minutes later, they, they were looking for me. They were calling me, we're about to do the scene. I'll make it back. I, and they're calling, me, and I hear them I come out of the door. I, this, this hallway is like, God, like 40, 50 feet away. I came out of the door, and I, and I hollered at them, said, I'm coming. I popped this, I won't say it, but I popped this wheelchair up on a wheelie, and I wheeled it all the way down on a wheelie, 
all the way down. And Tom Cruise, everybody's just watching like this. <laughs> I come up beside Mr. Tom Cruise and I go, whipping around, pop down, and I said, I'm ready.